Jackson! Hey! It was just a few days before Christmas the last time we saw the Bulls at the Birmingham Bowl in Alabama. A third straight bowl game reward for yet another great season and a game they were trying to win for the second straight year. Pressure coming and he's back. Bulls take over on downs. Deidrin Sanat playing his last USF game comes up with a huge sack on fourth down. Sanat's three first half sacks led the Bulls defense and added even more interest to his NFL draft possibilities. The Bulls enjoyed stepping out of the conference to showcase what teams in the American already know. These guys are tough to beat. The Birmingham Bowl was a microcosm of what the USF program and spirit is all about. The will of the Bulls would not be denied as playmakers rose to the occasion and stars shined brightest in the biggest moments of a close contest that saw USF overcome a late Texas Tech lead to prevail. Long over the middle of the field, it is caught, touchdown USF. First time in the end zone today, and it's Tyree McCants on the pass from Flowers. Fantastic catch for a first down for South Florida. Marquez Valdez Scantling. Flowers pump fake, throws toward the middle of the field, and he's got Darnell Salomon for a touchdown. Quinton Flowers put the finishing touches on a brilliant career, becoming the conference's all-time leader in total offense. Flowers now will scramble. He's got the first down, and he stays in bounds down the sideline. Bulls trying to tie this game. Flowers to throw, looking, looking, can't find anything. Rolls to the right. He's trying to score, and he's in. Touchdown, USF. Five-yard scramble, Quinton Flowers. Good protection, throws long, oh, he's got a man wide open, it's caught at the 25, it's Marquez Valdez-Scantling. It's a touchdown, and the Bulls lead for the first time today. 64 yards, flowers to Valdez-Scantling. A year ago, the Bulls did it in overtime to beat South Carolina. This time, they did it with 16 seconds to spare. It's the only time the lead really matters. And in back-to-back -back bowl games, they had that lead at the end over SEC and Big 12 teams, improving their record to 21 and four over the last two seasons. The reason they were ranked among the elite in the polls for a school record 20 straight weeks. It has been a terrific ride and the future is bright, but the hard work begins again now to ensure the success continues. Bull Strong Inside USF Football is presented by USF Health, by Tampa General Hospital, by the Florida Lottery, by AT&T, your world delivered, and by Hooters, Get your game on. The original wing joint since 1983. It's hard for you to just say who's going to be your leaders. You know, it's got to come within the players. And, and a lot of times people think that, hey, that guy's a really good football player and he has everything it takes, but he may not be a great leader. Big on two, big on two, one, two. Big on. What a leader is able to do is bring guys along with them. You know, he's a guy that, hey, the guys respect. They see the direction he's going and they want to follow him. Everyone knows that we've lost a great amount of seniors, a lot of great talents and all that. So everyone's just like, how can we fill the gaps that they've left? It's a production-based business and the next guy has to step up. We recruit guys to come in here and take the starter's job. So I think the guys that we have here now can fill those roles of those players. 
competition honestly brings out the best in everybody. And just knowing that there's somebody behind you to push you makes you work that much harder. Just knowing that somebody's right on your tail, you know, it's just gonna make you do that extra rep, do that extra set, do that extra lap and um, just make you push so much harder. And I think, honestly, that brings out the best in everybody. We just always battle, get each other better. That just make me want to just go out there and give my all every play. All you leaving, um, I knew that I was going to be moving to Mike and the big responsibility to, to fill, fill in that position. I'm more of a verbal guy, so it helps to know the defense and know what I got to do and just help everyone else out as a unit. Uh, bringing that energy, you know, not everybody all the time you're comfortable on the field and you showing that you're having fun and you're comfortable and you're in the zone, that just feeds energy to other players and make them get in the zone and that uh, bring the best out of them as well. Leadership means to me being accountable, trying to do the right thing every time to get that, that little boost of energy. You're the guy that they can look to to just try to get the team going any way you can try to lead by example. What I try to do is, if I'm going to go watch film, I kind of invite them, hey, come watch film with me. If I'm working out, you know, come work out with me, do all every single rep. We got to set a standard. You know, the new guys coming in, they're going to look at, look at us, look up to those older guys, on um, what USF defense is all about. And you got to carry that on for them. That's how you build a, a successful team, that bringing uh, guys and continuously build on what they saw the year before. So it's big for us to show them the rope, show them the, the, the standards and what we're going to do. I had guys that I looked up to and, and went to for leadership. And now, as I get older and, and grown up a little bit, I'm in my third year of playing now, I'm growing into that role and, and becoming that leader. We're coming in, we're coming in hot. We're ready to take on any competition and we're trying to have the greatest season that this Bulls have ever seen. We want to be fast, we want to be aggressive, we want to play physical. Our guys are going to play hard, they're going to play with a lot of physicality. Far sidelines picked off. SF rushes five and Crouchy's in trouble, and down he goes. You know, the thing with our fans, they want to see, they want to see a good product on the field. But it is caught, and this is going for a touchdown. Tyree McCann. It's all about player development. So if I just develop this player the right way, then it, you want to make him a whole person and it's more than just a physical part of the game. It's everything that comes involved with just developing a person. And it's all about what you're looking for. You look for guys who are instinctive. You look at guys for guys who has really good character. You look at guys who's going to be a great fit here for this program. We got to be the aggressor when contact happens. Well, number one thing we just think about the state of Florida in general there's great talent here, and that's one thing with our recruiting base and you know with Coach Strong's relationships in the state of Florida. You know, we've got talented guys here. We're a very athletic team. Yeah, we've been known for that. I mean, this team is, is full of talent. Just a lot of guys that can run around, hit, move. We got acrobats, we got go-get-it players, we got everything you want. A lot of hungry guys. With our speed and our um, athleticism, I think we're one of the most athletic teams in the conference. Personally, I'm biased because I'm from Florida, but I think Florida's a hotbed. I mean, there's like, endless athletes, guys who want to play football and guys who are good at football and play other sports too. You see a lot of them come from high school, you're like, oh, that kid, you know, he's pretty good. And then you get here and you kind of like see it in person and it just like amazes you like how much talent is actually on this team. It's nothing like playing football in Florida and playing against those guys and now playing with a lot of those guys, it's amazing. Everybody wants to be the best. I mean, you're from Florida, so you gotta be the best. Show everyone that you deserve the top spot and that you're the top dog on the team. So, I mean, being from Florida, everybody just has that edge about them. I mean, we feel really good about the guys. I mean, we had three guys go to the combine this year. The level of talent that's here at the University of South Florida will compare against anybody in the state. But, you know, we, we never let them relax. We always want them to think, no matter how good that they think they are 
or that they've accomplished something, that there's always something more out there. And, you know, I always tell them if you feel like you've arrived or you've accomplished everything that you've accomplished, let's just go get a, a, a gold a Hall of Fame NFL jacket, get you fitted for it, and let's just stop playing football. If not, let's just keep working on something that you can get better on every day. We're right here, right, right where we need to be. Where we gonna be on defense, guys? Down here, it's gonna tell the tip. Hey, swag on two, swag on two, one, two, swag. swag. Bull Strong Inside USF Football is presented by USF Health, by Tampa General Hospital, by the Florida Lottery, by AT&T, your world delivered, and by Hooters, get your game on, the original wing joint since 1983. When I get up every morning, I mean, I've got a battle, and, you know, I've got a fight. When I show up, I mean, I understand those things aren't going to be easier. you got to play stronger than you, you feel. Just, that's, that's just something that we preach. We preach uh, just being relentless. We want to be the toughest team, you know, at the end of the game on Saturday afternoons. Good, good, good. Hit, hit, hit. We, I think we're based on a, a skill, sharpened skill mentality, so getting after each other brings out the best in us, and that's what makes a winning tradition. You know, you you, you just got to be physical. There's a, We have a lot of... And it's crazy because we have a lot of smaller guys, but they don't play like they're small, and that's something good to see. Starts up front. Uh, starts up front with the offensive linemen. I mean, we're going to be physical in what we do. You know, we take a lot of pride in being physical, running the ball downhill. You know, it doesn't only have to become in the, in, the, in the run game. I mean, we can do it in the pass game as well. I mean, we expect those guys to be physical. Just being a physical football team, it's what the game is about. But also the mental aspect is always critical because you talk about, hey, I want a team that's mentally and physically tough. And so when you have the mental toughness to you, then you, that's a more of your learning process. That's how the game is played. As a team, we're all like brothers. I mean, we fight a lot. We're always like trying to be, be better than the other one, but at the end of the day, we all know that we're all one team. Like, whether we leave on the field, off the field, we're still brothers. Especially in the spring, because obviously you're going against your, uh, you know, your own teammates for the whole spring, so. Competition is always a big part of what we try to stress here at, at South Florida also. Everybody wants to be the best. Everybody wants to make a tackle. Everybody wants to run through. Everybody wants to get the sack. It's just everyone's trying to be their best, and that's just helping us get better like as a whole. It's no secret that in order to be an offensive lineman, you have to eat. And sometimes, you have to eat a lot. But nothing's better at fueling the men in the trenches than some home cooking. Offensive line coach and run game coordinator, Matt Maddox, understands this and invites his players over for a barbecue. How you guys doing? My name's Matt Maddox. I'm the offensive line coach and run game coordinator here at the uh, University of South Florida. Hello. Hello. Got the uh, O-line coming over here in a few minutes. Got the queso getting ready to go. And uh, excited to uh, be able to spend the night with the fellas and uh, enjoy a little time with the family. Uh, go to the show. Go to the show. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> They were going with about 17 pounds of pulled pork sandwiches for the fellas. Uh, 
Did that last night overnight for about uh, 14 hours on the smoker. We'll have that. I've got uh, some sausages we cooked up. Uh, the, the wife did cheesy potatoes, a new bean recipe, so that'll be the new uh, try tonight. And then we always go with the queso. I'm, uh, that's always my favorite, so the fellows enjoy the queso to get started. The thing that we, we enjoy about it is, is just a chance to kind of get away from you know, the, the, the rigors of the day-to-day the -day grind that they get. Um, I also, I enjoy, uh, you know, barbecuing, so I get to work on different recipes as well as uh, know they're gonna get a big time meal, but uh, they get to get around my girls, uh, get around my wife, you know, get a chance for my wife to meet the guys that uh, she hears about on a daily basis. So it's a, it's a great time to just relax and, and, and be ourselves. Moments like these may seem small or immeasurable, but the camaraderie between players and coaches is vital to building trust, friendship, and loyalty to their brothers in green and gold, and to the men who lead them, and show them what it means to be a family. At the offensive line, we're really close like a family. We just came from our coach's house to have like a meal, and we just got together, had fun, played a couple games, and just just came together and made it all a whole lot nicer. Four. I'm done for. <laughs> Two. Ah. Three. Ah. Ah. All right, Marcus is up next. Two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It makes it easier for us to like communicate with them because Without that type of like comfort with them, it's hard to communicate, hard to ask questions to them. So with this, like, with more communication and like this, like more of a family type atmosphere, it helps it helps just get comfortable with all the coaches. You know, I think they enjoy it. They get a chance to uh, number one, they know they're gonna get fed that day, and then they usually uh, always take a day, day and a half of leftovers. So I think they enjoy that and uh, really just a chance to relax and get around the fellas a little bit more. There's always room for big guys to play seven on seven, basketball, anything that makes them feel and look a little more athletic. They enjoy that type of stuff. So they just might be on a sugar high right now from the dessert. <laughs> Hello, Bulls fans. It's Ronnie Hoggins. Terry McCants. Marcus Norman. And he's going to be set. We're going to come out. We're going to compete this year. We'd love to see you this fall. Making some plays, having you guys come out there, cheer us on in your Bulls gear. We look forward to you guys coming out and supporting us this year. Go Bulls. This year is going to be full of excitement, a lot of energy. Can't wait to see you out there. Corner to McCants. What a catch, Tyree McCants. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. Touchdown, USF. The USF Spring Game is brought to you by the USF Federal Credit Union. Preparations for the Spring Game begin long before the paint hits the field. Although it's been months since the last time USF football took the gridiron, the Bulls have been working through winter, conditioning their bodies and minds to become stronger than ever before. And battling through spring camp, where roster spots remain open after the departure of last year's senior class. This is a time where fresh faces and rising talent can showcase their abilities and how they'll fit into their coaches' systems. Charlie Strong's coaching staff, returning for their second season on the South Florida sideline, use this time to analyze every aspect of their team and work with their student athletes on everything from the fundamentals to position changes. The Bulls eagerly awaited the spring game, not because it marked the end of camp, but because it provided an opportunity for the players to reconnect with fans, friends, family, 
and the USF community. We've had all these practices and a lot of people ain't had a chance to see us yet. So now we get a chance to go out and compete in front of a crowd and just have fun. And the spring game, it comes down just having fun. You go out and just enjoy it. Everybody's excited about the new team, new opportunities. The spring game is very, very fun. I mean, you get a chance for your alumni to come out and see you because they built the foundation for this program. So to show them that um, what they left for us and we're taking it over is very, very big. Back at it again, you know, enjoying our time here. At the spring game. Always. Spring game. Hey, we got six, two, and nine. Yeah. Hey, we need to retire all our jerseys. Ooh. It's going to be a lot of competing, a lot of hitting, a lot of running around, and a whole lot of emotion. F family, friends, um, atmosphere. Parents here to come out, watch their kids, their sons, you know. Uh, the players are going to try to put on. Just seeing where the Bulls are now, just knowing that we have a great program and how we're we're always improving. Everybody's ready. Everybody's excited. I mean, we're all looking forward to it, offense versus defense, and we just got to see who's better. Let's have some fun. Remember, let's protect one another. Come on, let's go. Work on set. Set. Let's go. Let's go. With a special thank you to our armed forces and veterans, the game commenced offense against defense, white versus green. The defense got off to a hot start, punctuated by an early interception made by senior safety Jamon Thomas. Last spring game, time to rock out, man. Quarterbacks Brett Keen and Chris Oladokun have competed all spring for the right to start next season. And as it was throughout camp, so too in the game. Both quarterbacks threw for 127 yards and had two touchdowns. The offense found their rhythm with touchdowns by running back Jordan Cronkite, junior receiver Darnell Solomon, <laughs> receiver Randall St. Felix, who finished with a team high 65 yards on four catches, and bruising receiver Tyree McCants. <laughs> Brian Jean Marie's defense proved they haven't lost their edge, racking up nine sacks, led by two and a half from senior defensive end Josh Black. Senior safety Nate Ferguson was a menace, leading the team with nine total tackles. The offense in white won the scrimmage, though the close score serves as an indicator how hard the Bulls compete on both sides of the ball. But ultimately, they are one team. A program that has learned what it takes to win and what it will take to become champions. Go, 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 go.